Welcome to Money Fit Live this week. My name is Todd with Money Fit, and today we're talking about five passive income streams. We're going to review how passive are they? How much work do they uh, require setting up? How much passive income might uh, might you expect any kind of passive income? We won't go into a specific dollar amounts, of course, because that's going to depend on the individual. But let's go ahead and, and get right started. Get started right in there. It's defined passive income. Passive income means that you receive income without any direct work input. You might be earning money while you sleep. You might be earning money while you're on vacation. You might be working, uh, earning money while you're doing some other sort of activity, but it's earning money while you're doing uh, anything but working. So you're not getting paid as a direct result, direct, direct result of your time exchanging for money. Also, usually requires a lot of upfront investment of time and or money and energy. So that's really uh, where passive income, uh, real passive income is going to take a lot of time to build once it's set up, and it could be a year, it could be 10 years, could be 40 years. But once it's set up, it just generates money ongoing. Okay, so it is about time. Number one, let's take a look at the passive income number one. And no particular order, except I want to get this one, uh, number one, up there and out of the way so that you don't ever think that we would think it's passive income. We're talking about multi-level marketing. Now, there are a lot of good people in multi-level marketing. I have, I spent uh, nearly two years in the corporate side of a multi-level marketing company running a country, uh, a country market. I know that there are a lot of good people. And I know that there are some people, very few, that can make a ton of money. They call it passive income. Uh, but here's what it is. It's really skewed. Virtually every multi-level marketing company that's going to say we have a special product, we have a special um, compensation plan, they are almost all of them skewed to the what I call the first ends. Those who are in the first 10, 20, 50, 100 people to get into the, into the program and sell if you are coming, if you've already, by the time you hear about this plan, it's really too late. And two, if you somehow work your tail off, you have to spend hours and hours and hours every day for weeks and then months and then years in order to build an effective multi-level marketing business. And then you will barely earn uh, median income, if at all, if at all, better off going with a traditional uh, job, uh, finding a, a, a legitimate, what's called legitimate, one that is is you work for an employer who pays you, whether you pay as a desk job or where you're out and about, whatever it is, uh, your chances are extraordinarily much better to earn income. But neither of them are passive. Multi-level marketing, even those who uh, earn the million dollar a year paycheck, the, the 10 or 20 in most companies, some companies more, some companies less, uh, they are still traveling a lot to do a lot of recruiting and business stuff. So that still involves a lot of uh, consulting with their, with their teams but you are running your own business. It is not passive and will never be passive. That's uh, pretty straight from, from the hip for, for what I, my own experience. Passive income number two, home-based sales. Again, not passive. Whether you're trying to sell uh, kitchen tools or something else for the home or for the family. It's quite often for a home family. Uh, it involves business meetings in the home. You're gathering, uh, uh, you get a friend or a neighbor and you have them invite all their friends and, and neighbors and then you go and do a presentation. It involves work. You're running your own business. It is not passive. You will, uh, you're, it's, it's all sales. OK, 
Okay, there are just, it's a direct sales, home-based sales, whatever you want to call it. Some people refer to them as passive incomes. I, I'm just trying to kind of dispute that myth. It, uh, if you are a salesperson, you are not no longer in a pass. It's not a passive income. You have to work, put in the time and the energy in order to get the sales. Even after you, you people will say, "Well, I, you know, I'm I'm sleeping. I, I I can sleep and earn income." You only earn income for a limited amount of time after each one of those sales meetings. So there's your home based sale. Passive income number three, business investment. Now this one has some great potential to be completely, almost completely passive. You have to know the person or somehow meet the person who is an entrepreneur with a great idea and want, just needs some, some investment. So you're going to have to come up with a lot of time, a lot of money to invest in it. There are some online app or some online um, services and even apps where you can try and invest in something, but extremely high risk, extraordinarily high risk. I worked for a very, very small startup in the, at the end of the dot com time, uh, where there was five or six, uh, investors and they all lost everything. It, the entrepreneur, the leader, and all of the staff, we were doing our best, but it just, the time was not right. And, uh, it, it was not ideal for, um, for the market. So they lost thousands and tens of thousands of dollars. So do your homework. And I would always recommend that somehow that start, whoever's starting up the business, they've got to put their own skin in the game somehow. It can't just be asking you for money and they don't, they haven't come up with anything but an idea. They've got to be putting a significant amount of their own capital up front, uh, just so that you know that they're serious. Uh, even then, you got to do your homework. You got to be involved for a while. And once it's up and running, then yeah, you are earning some great uh, passive income. Passive income number four, real estate rentals. This is a big one that's out there in the FIRE community. FIRE means financial independence, retire early, or just the FI community, financial independence community. Talk about, they, um, there's a lot of discussion about creating long-term passive income through real estate investments. So you're buying properties, uh, whether it's a single home or a, a duplex or quadplex or apartment complex, and you're renting it out and earning rent every single month. It's a great concept that it is idea. It can be somewhat passive. But you have to either do the management yourself. You have to collect the rent. You have to find the renters because the average rent, uh, rentor, uh, is only going to be in that place for not a whole lot, a long period. You'll get lucky and have some people in there for a decade, or you can have somebody in there that will break their lease, uh, just four months into an annual lease. And then you have to find somebody new. And sometimes it can be pretty tough depending on the market. But there's your uh, rental property passive income. If you're managing it yourself, you'll also from time to time, not as often as people fear, but you may get, and especially if you do your homework when you're uh, qualifying the renter, you may not get very many emergency phone calls in the middle of the night or during the day, pipes broken, something uh, something is clocked or, or broken or leaking, whatever it is. You don't have to fix everything yourself. You're going to need a network, though, of professionals, plumbers, electricians, um, contractors to fix walls that, that get holes in them and things like that. So what, even if you get a phone call in the middle of the night, your job is not to go and fix it. Your job may just be to make another phone call and have, have uh, that person in your professional network go fix it. So it's somewhat passive income. The great thing is that properties generally, not always, but generally go up in value as well. And if you have a, uh, even if you have a mortgage on that property, or well, every year your rent, increasing your rent 
for those who are in your apartment because that's just how rents work. And so your mortgage is staying, 30 year fixed mortgage is staying the same amount, but every year the amount of rent is coming uh, coming in is more, so you earn more and more uh, profit. And passive income number five, securities. Here's where we're talking about traditional investments, whether it's a 401k at your office or a 403b if you work for a nonprofit or a thrift savings plan if you are in the military, an individual retirement account outside of employment, or maybe even if you are still among the, the, the lucky few who actually will get some sort of pension through your business. So these are the purely passive incomes. You invest money over time and it just, the securities are growing. The stocks, uh, fu uh, mutual funds, uh, exchange traded funds, they keep growing uh, because they're earning uh, returns. Some years they go down, some months they go way down, some months they go up. And But over time, they are generally going to increase. They have historically for a, well over a hundred years, but that is no guarantee. So, but it, it's a long-term thing. Don't, it's very, very risky to do, to try and make money on a very short-term basis, but you can uh, build a truly passive income stream through these kind of investments so that when you are ready to retire, it is, is earning you enough every month. You can retire and live all you have to do is withdraw, sell, uh, uh, submit some sale, um, sell orders so that you now have money uh, to spend and live on. That is the only true passive income of these five and virtually out there. They, I mean, the, the business one, if you can find somebody, you're going to invest in a business. It's the same thing as these securities, but you're just doing it on an individual le level, personal level, versus securities where you're going through stock exchanges um, around the world or in, in your own country. And, uh, but you're buying, you're essentially investing, buying, um, businesses that you expect to grow. So those are the five general, uh, the five passive incomes I wanted to review today. If you'd like to learn more about passive incomes, see our link at moneyfit.org slash blog slash what is passive income with hyphens in between those moneyfit.org slash blog slash what is passive income and there's a, a dash in front or a hyphen in, in the middle of those last four words thank you for joining me on this money fit live webinar you can find this webinar and other webinars through the archive link at moneyfit.org slash live for money fit this is todd christensen author of everyday money for everyday people and 50 plus on fire thank you for joining me and i hope you have a great day